I don't think we've stated it yet, but I like the ending of Attack on Titan. Let me just start by saying that. So um, I also very much when I when we watched it, me and Connie, we sat down, we watched it, and then I remember it ended, and I was just like depressed, kind of like yeah. that feeling. It's not real depression, but it's like that empty feeling you have inside, like when you finish something that was like yep. really fucking good and you just like feel empty a little bit. Like I had that fucking empty feeling and I was just staring at the screen and then we ended up talking about it for like an hour, two hours, just talking about all this fucking stuff and it was just fucking awesome. And then yeah. that led me to, <clears throat> briefly, me and Fraser talked, not really about anything, but briefly we both mentioned like, hey, I, I like it, I like it too. All right, can't wait to talk about it. Yeah. And then I said, I want to look up <laughs> why the manga readers hated it because the manga readers if you don't know fucking hated oh, the end they bombed it they were like this shit is awful they they literally made me believe that it might be changed that's what they yeah. were saying they were like hopefully people were saying hopefully the ending gets changed for the anime because the manga end is so bad that like it needs it needs to be changed it needs to be a uh, full metal alchemist or something yeah, it needs to is... completely have a rewrite and i'm like damn it's that bad that you guys want a rewrite a rewrite is crazy by the a way rewrite is insane i'll get cuz i i've looked up i've learned some of the reasons and i'll talk about that a little bit later but mm -hmm. i want to touch back on what you were already talking about um just how insane it was like lelouch not lelouch but lelouch um yeah. but aaron yeah. but aaron mm -hmm. like the sacrifice he did and there's something i saw Somebody made the argument, which I don't agree with. Somebody made the argument that everything is predetermined and like Aaron didn't have the ability to change anything, which I think is blatantly not true. Because I think, once again, I think that Mikasa thing was an alternate version yes, of the could events. have gone that route. It just wasn't a, to him, it wasn't a good route. Yeah. And I think based on what Aaron said, essentially, he blatantly tells Armin, I tried to kill everyone. Like my yeah. plan was to kill everyone, but. <laughs> The furthest I ever got in all of these various timelines of events that I've seen and dealt with, the furthest I get is 80%. And some way, somehow, you guys stop me in, like, various versions. And maybe yeah. sometimes it ends up a little bit better than other times. But he said, for the most part, the furthest I get is 80%. I, yeah, want I, can't, I can't get the 100% yeah, that I he's want. He's like, he wants to kill them all because he, in his head, he wants to create the safest possible planet for, like, yep. his people. Um, but the furthest he gets is 80%. So now his plan is like, okay, I'm going to kill as many as I can and then do this in a way where, A, my friends can end up looking like heroes and he can try to use that to end the strife between the two colonies. But then B, even if the rest of the world still wants to go to war with Paradise Island, I've now leveled the playing field. I've gotten yeah. rid of 80% of the world's population. So even if they want to go to war with us, like they'll be able to hold their own and... It'll they'll they'll be on even playing field, which is just like it's fucking it's just nuts. The amount so of I, things he's gone through. Yes, uh, the Aaron Aaron has gone through a lot psychologically, and he even explains at one point, my brain got scrambled the second. Basically, this is kind of confirmed what I'm saying in this episode, but the second he touched Astoria, yeah, uh, his brain has been fucked ever since then because. Then he gets the founder plus attack titan sight. And he said in this episode, he confirmed that like the past and the future are all happening at the same time for me. Yeah. And I can't distinguish them from one another. So I'm literally, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm going crazy. Like I'm actually a crazy person. I acknowledge that I'm a crazy person, but like this is the best that I could do. His whole idea though, to wipe out everything beyond the wall, I think is actually brilliant in, in a weird way, right? Like not to advocate for genocide here, but I <laughs> get what he, from his childlike mindset of, okay, if I just start everything over, right yeah. that's the cleanest slate you could get if i just completely wipe out everything that exists because everything that exists is shit is essentially what he's saying and low-key low-key i kind of feel like he's not really Aaron's, wrong yeah like Aaron's answer i'm looking at the world right now that we live in with you got this shit going on with israel and, and uh and palestine that's been going on forever and it's just like reaching a boiling point right now even more you have all the other things but like russia and they're in a war with a bordering country ukraine and then you have tensions between china and united states and you have like all the other things that we've been going on with afghanistan and iran and iraq and like all of these crazy things that the world has seen and then you even have things that happened in the past like world war ii and world war one and it's just a lot right so 
we have a lot of things on our hands. We have slavery, like this country is known for, is one of its biggest industries ever. Um, and it's a huge stain on it. And Attack on Titan also has something very similar. And hating people for something that they cannot change. There's a lot of themes in Attack on Titan that are that are very real and comparable and relatable to real life. So when Aaron's like, yo, I think the best way to handle this is a hard reset. And they don't have nukes technically like you know armin is a nuke when he goes colossal mode but it's not a real they don't have real nukes yet uh but they do at the end but anyway but they don't have nukes in attack on titan's main timeline and so their hard reset is the rumbling the rumbling is a way to flatten the earth literally wiping out all of humanity to an extent and just being like all right there's only a few people left you guys can live and just rebuild civilization from that from ground zero and there will be no one to oppose you and that's like his vision of the way to do it and then you know because he couldn't get further than 80 percent, it was like okay well if i set myself up as a villain set you guys up as a hero then the 20 percent of people who are left in a world will hopefully look at eldians as not a threat and as heroes and on top of that i will take away your titan powers and once they see that you're just regular humans like everyone else, once they see that you are no more of a threat than any other person, hopefully the fighting will stop. Now, that's a, this is naive, but I don't fault Eren for believing yeah. that this is, I mean, also working with what he had, like this to him, this is the best solution. It is naive to think that like, oh, just because they can't transform anymore, they'll suddenly be accepted into the fold of the outside world. And I yeah. get why, you know, he can only think that he's not that old. Eren is, for, like Eren is still, at the end of the series, he's still basically a kid. Not only that, an, an important thing about Aaron is that he ends up... So, it's interesting. He ends up playing, like, you could argue, like, this super master 4D chess and the way he sets yes. up all these pieces. However, I think something that's important to realize is that he only does that through the, uh, the fact that he gets to, like, basically time walk his fucking mind. And he can yeah. see all of these he can play out all of these situations and redo them over and over again it's like reloading a save file yeah. in order to get a result but at the end of the day he's not light yagami he's not l he's not a super genius he's right, just a right. regular guy and so as many times as he replays the game and tries to get to a solution he's only as smart as however he is and granted he's not dumb the point that i'm getting to though is that like he is able to set up all of these pieces, not because he's Light Yagami, but because he seemingly has seen it happen a hundred fucking times, and he's, yeah. like, tweaking things. I think one of the really cool, interesting things, and the way it, like, plays on itself, and in my opinion, the way it, like, plays on the idea of Aaron seeing these results happen multiple times and him having to change it multiple times to get different results is, I think probably, and this is, like, obviously not confirmed, but I think probably... The events of Attack on Titan happen in, like, an original timeline and leads to the point where Eren still gets the Attack Titan, but, like, maybe his mom lives or whatever. I don't know. But the point right. is, eventually he gets access to, like, the memories and things like that, and he can start changing things. And I think probably at one point Bertolt dies, like, when Eren is seeing everything happen, he, like, kills Bertolt and, like, think he, like, kills the Because he's like, Titan. I'm preventing you from killing my mom. Exactly. And then saving his mom. No but then... Then he sees as 10 years later, basically, Armin ends up dying. He has no way of saving him. The point that I'm getting to is when he explains the situation of why he had to kill his mom and why he had to send Dina Fritz, that Titan, to kill his mom, he explains it in a way where, like, because you know that he saved Berthold in that moment. Because if you remember, mm -hmm. that Titan is going to kill Berthold, and then she just, like, walks past him. Because he, like, comes down from the Castle Titan. He's exhausted. She just walks past him and then kills Aaron's mom. And in my opinion, that serves two po <laughs> that serves two purposes. One, it kills Aaron's mom right in front of him, ensuring yep. that he'll have more of a vigor going forward. Because maybe one of the previous times it happened, his mom doesn't die there. And so even though he becomes the attack titan and gets future memories, maybe he doesn't have as much of a fire in him as he would later have. And so And I agree with that point real quick because he brings it up multiple times throughout the series. Yeah, yeah. Like, once he finds out about Reiner and Bertholdt, Bertholdt, I remember in the final season part one, one of the things he says to Reiner before he transforms is like, yo, I know that this building is brimming with life. I know that these are a lot of people that are you know and you're related to them and everything like that. He was like, but I have a question for you, though, because um, me and you are the same. Why did my mom have to die? 
<laughs> and he just like asks him that and then reiner gets nervous because he's like i don't have an answer for that question yeah, like yeah. i really don't have damn an right you don't and then Aaron just transforms and starts killing people and it's like oh okay so that's been driving him for a very long time the whole thing of his mom is not random when he says it even though at the time that he says it you could be like uh, you know he's just bringing it up because he's emotional about it which any kid would be because it's traumatic as fuck. but then you find out that like he's the one who set this in motion so it's like yes that you're, what kenny's saying about the vigor that he needed the fire under his ass to do all of this is like seeing his mom die i think is a catalyst for yeah. him becoming the person that he ultimately needs to be to kill 80 percent of the world like i think probably like the first time his mom did die right and then all this happens and then when he tries to redo it maybe he does it in a way where he saves his mom but now he realizes that like the young aaron they're going forward doesn't have the vigor to necessarily make it all happen the right way. Yeah. So then he does it and he has to make sure his mom dies and then Berthold dies. But then he realizes, fuck, Armin dies and now we don't have access to the colossal type. Yep. So he sets it up in a way where like, okay, my mom has to die so that I'm fucking angry. Berthold, has, Berthold to has to live so we can so save Armin. Armin. And it's like, yep. and it's fucking awesome. But it's not, it, the other thing that's cool is it's not because Aaron is a super genius. He's not like Yagami that figured it out. It's because he fucking dealt with all of that trauma over and over and over, like a yes. hundred fucking times to lead him there. And that's why he ends up going fucking crazy too. Like there's a one scene, I think season three, where he's in prison. Maybe it's final season part one, I don't know. But he's in prison and he's like talking to himself. And Hanji's like, what the fuck is wrong with him? Like Hanji's looking <laughs> at him in prison and he's talking to himself. And it's like, he's having a conversation with like multiple realities at that fucking time, the yes. past so and the future. I think there are so many things cool about the way uh, Attack on Titan is written in regards to the time stuff because they don't have to explicitly show what Kenny and I just said all at once. They don't have to like spoon feed it to you, but you just know that that's what happened based mm -hmm. on the ending and just other things that you've seen. Like you know that he's replayed these events over and over. Um, you know that and th this. I think that another thing is that we speculated on this very podcast in yeah, a yeah, yeah. previous episode of a of Attack on Titan. So look for our Attack on Titan episodes on the Amner podcast. We blatantly. I remember blatantly saying, I wonder if Aaron killed his mom. And that was like the catalyst for him to become who he is. I I, I forget what caused me to think that. Maybe it was the Grisha Jaeger thing, because that was a big... Yeah, it probably was, was when we were big, talking about the Grisha Jaeger thing. Because the Grisha Jaeger thing was crazy. He, get up. It was like, hold the door. What do you do? Get up. <laughs> yeah, like you need to kill the fucking Reese family. Um, I think the Grisha Jaeger thing, just like hold the door from a, uh, from Game of Thrones recontextualized basically the entire series for me so yeah when i first when i first saw game of thrones hold the door episode i was like oh shit brand can affect things that haven't even happened yet like technically he could make something happen because hodor was a regular person before brand warged into him in the past and like brain rotted him or whatever mm -hmm. turned him into a person that could only say one word and and essentially just serve him to get him to a certain point but like Brand wasn't even born yet when yeah. that happened. Like when Hodor became Hodor, he was Brand wasn't even a thing. Like he literally didn't exist. So it's just so cool to think like, oh wow, that means that Brand could have also made the Mad King. Again, Brand wasn't born yet, but he's the reason that the Mad King could have became the Mad King because they they allude to stuff like sometimes he would just stare off and say, burn it all for no reason at all. And they said he would say it over and over and over again. And the only other person I know who says the same thing over and over and over again is Hodor. Yeah. So there was like a way for Game of Thrones to write themselves into an actually good ending. Um, yeah, yeah. But they just fumbled the ball. Whereas, whereas Attack on Titan, they just, they didn't fumble the ball. They didn't, the yeah. And I mean, it's cool because like when you go back and you see the, I don't, I don't remember his name. I think they called him the Owl. But the Attack Titan before Grisha, Yes. And when he and like I remember that's like season three. And dude, yeah, I think that's the that very was, end of it or that, something. Like that's one of those that's like a twist and a mind like I remember watching that episode and he looks at Aaron's father. Aaron is not born yet. Aaron's father doesn't even know Aaron's mom yet. And he right. looks at them and he says, You have to save Armin and Mikasa. And he's yes, like and What the fuck pizza. are you talking about? And it's like and I remember me watching it being like, What in the fuck? is going on right now and that's and, 20 years before anything has even like Aaron's not even born yet it's 20 years before any of this goes down really or like some crazy amount of time before that yeah but it was it was just like hey guys if you like this clip we have full video versions of our podcast episodes available on the i am there patreon as well as exclusive content if you'd like to listen to our full podcast episodes or find us on any other social media platforms you can do so by clicking the link tree below